Hello everyone, my name is Cristian Negulescu and today I will present you the new Salesforce activity from UiPath. This Salesforce activity is um, uh, working with REST API, so it's a full background activity. On UiPath, you will see that you will have a folder that is called Salesforce API and you will have a lot of activity inside of Salesforce API. Let's see how we, we start. First, we drag and drop a uh, Salesforce activity scope. On the Salesforce Activity Scope, you will configure the uh, you will configure the connection to the REST API. You have here all the data, and you are able to choose the server type will be a test or a live. In our case, we'll use the sandbox. So let's um, configure our. Okay, we have everything configured now. So let's uh, let's connect and see what's happened. So from here, I have a test connection. I can test the connection, and you see that I have a valid connection. Good, so from the design time, I'm able to test my connection. Let's see what else we can do. Let's try to get some data from Salesforce to be able to get some data. We have here a data wizard. And if we click on this button, so this data wizard have a search command and he will return a data table, a response, and also if the collection is valid. So in this wizard, basically you have predefined SQL message, for example, let's do all the lost opportunity from 2008, own opportunity from the, the Q1. So from the wizard, from the same time, I can run. I can run the command and I can see the results. So I, I know what I expect, what I want to, uh, what will, uh, what the system will return. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's modify this one. So for example, here we work with the opportunity uh, table. Let's see what else we have on the opportunity table. So to check what else we have on the opportunity table, here we have a list with all the tables. Then we'll search for opportunity. Uh, this one, let's search for opportunity. And on the opportunity, let's see what else we have. So these are all the fields that are on our server. Yeah? So let's get another data. For example, uh, let's say the probability yeah? or the amount. Let's see if you have the mount. We have the mount. Let's take the probability control. Let's put the probability here and let's run it again. So when I run it again, you see that I have also the probability. Now let's go further and see. So let's see what else we have on this component. So we have different entities from the Salesforce that are usually used by the, the operator. So we have accounts, assets, campaign, cases, contacts leads, files, opportunities, tasks. On files, you are able to add files to Salesforce, you are able to assign files to the opportunities, to accounts, and so on. But let's see what we have inside of one entity. So basically we have an add procedure, a delete procedure, a get procedure, and an update procedure. Let's start with an account, and let's see what we can, how we can add an account. So if here we can add an account like this, we go to the configuration parameters, and here we need to give him the parameters. But I don't know the parameters. So I have a button here where I can connect the, the wizard is going to the server and get the mandatory parameters. If we want to add more parameters, for example, here you have the billing country, but probably I want to add also the billing city. I don't know what is there. So I can go and ask the server for a valid um, registration. And on the valid registration, I see all the parameters. And it's true, I can put the billing city. So I can go add a parameter and put the billing city. Here I can put, I can use IntelliSense, so I can use the variables and so on. So let's complete, let's put some data. So I fill up some data, the company is REST API company. And let's see from the design time, you can run the command. So if I hit run, let's see what we have. So we have a valid command. So that means that our data, it's, um, uh, so our command is perfect and the data is registered to the server. But now, this was a, just a test from the wizard. So I don't need to keep that data on the server. So if I hit revert command, the system will go and delete the data from the server. Let's make a mistake. Instead of billing city, let's add, add another parameter. Let's put um, like this and like this. Let's see what's happened, yeah? So if I run the command, and she will say, look, this TAG blah, blah, it's not a valid one. So when you have an error, you can easily copy the error and search on the internet for these errors. Okay, let's go further. So this is the update delete for, for an account. But Salesforce instance, they have also custom instance. So everyone can create the tables inside of, of their Salesforce. 
And to access that uh, custom instance, you have here a custom uh, activities with add, delete, and update. So let's see what we have there. So if I want to add a, to a custom instance, remember that the server is already connected to the, the, the wizard is connected to the server. So I want here a code, yeah? So we'll go here and add something on code. Okay, perfect. I configure the parameters. The system can go on the server, check the data. Also, you can have an example with the, with the fields. And in this way, you can work with any table that you have on your um, Salesforce instance, even they are custom created by you. So there are two big advantages with this activity. So the implementation time, it's much, much more than the normal um, automation with your, uh, with your automation. And because you can test everything from the wizard and also it's a background activity. It's very, very fast and allow the person to do other steps in time of the robot is working with the Salesforce. Thank you very much. Have a good one.